We are getting closer and closer to this year's Halloween Horror Nights, just under 50 days here in Orlando, and a lot has been coming out about the event. We got multi-night tickets here in Orlando, as well as some new dates added, as well as the beginning of HHN 32 construction. And there are also a few concerns and questions that people have when it comes to the most recent Horror Night Nightmare speculation maps for both Orlando and Hollywood. So I wanted to gather all these little news updates in one video, give you guys my thoughts, my opinions, and let you know what's going on with HHN this year. So the first thing that happened just yesterday, Thursday, July 13th, we got the announcement of our third house at both Orlando and Hollywood theme to, of course, Stranger Things. Now, this has been probably the worst kept secret of Halloween Horror Nights this year, as it was rumored for many, many months beforehand. And I have a whole video talking about this announcement, the trailer, the press release, and all that stuff. So if you want to check out my full thoughts on the Stranger Things HHN announcement, I have a video up there in the cards. But just before Stranger Things was announced, we also got a pretty big update for HHN in Orlando, and that surrounds multi-night tickets and new dates added. So yes, new dates have been added. The event was supposed to run from September 1st to October 31st, ending on Halloween, but that has now been extended to November 4th, giving us a full 48 nights of HHN this year. And while they've added dates in the past, this is the longest that the event has ever run. Now moving to the multi-night tickets, they are the same ticket tiers as before, but there are some changes that I do want to go over, as well as just going over the tickets for those who are unfamiliar with them. So the lowest tier of HHN multi-night pass for Orlando is the Rush of Fear Pass. This will let you in the event select nights between September 1st and 24th, and will run you $179.99. This only gets you into the event during September, but is a good pass for those who want to come in at the beginning of the season when the crowds might be a little lower. The next tier up from Rush of Fear is the Frequent Fear Pass. This gets you 30 nights of the event every Sunday through Thursday plus opening weekend and will run you $229.99. This is a good pass for those who also want to visit in October, but might not want to shell out all the money for those Fridays and Saturdays. Next up, we have the third tier, the tier I am most familiar with, the Frequent Fear Plus Pass. This will get you 40 nights, including every Sunday through Friday, plus the first and last Saturday nights of the event. And this is going to run you $269.99. And finally, we have the big boy Ultimate Frequent Fear Pass. This is going to get you all 48 nights of the event, and is going to run you $374.99. And with the multi-night tickets, we also got the Scream Early tickets, which allows you to do stay and scream without normal universal admission. So for example, if you don't have a way into the park like an annual pass or a day ticket, but you still want to do stay and scream, you'll want to get the Scream Early pass. And these are going to run you $40 extra on top of your HHN ticket. So yeah, more expensive all around. This is to be expected as every year it's getting more expensive to go to Halloween Horror Nights, unfortunately. And we're seeing about a $50 increase from last year's prices from a at least what I've noticed. But where the price hikes are really telling is when it comes to Express. So with all these passes, you can add on Express for an additional charge, and those additional charges can be quite hefty. For a Rush of Fear Pass with Express, it's gonna run you $529.99. For a Frequent Fear Pass with Express, that's gonna run you $609.99. For Frequent Fear Plus with Express, it's gonna run you $699.99 and even $700. And for an ultimate fear pass with Express, this is going to run you, wait for this, $919.99. That's going to be almost a grand. These are all before taxes, by the way. Now, in a year like this, it might be worth it when considering some of the size of the IPs that are coming to this event. Stranger Things is easily going to have a two-hour line every single night. But I can't deny that these are quite expensive, and I wonder how long they can keep increasing it like this before they completely price themselves out. Now, the prices aren't the only thing new when it comes to these multi-night passes for this year. There is a new sort of reservation system that comes in with the Frequent Fear Pass, but don't worry, it's not that restrictive. Basically, the first night you plan on visiting Halloween Horror Nights, you're going to have to make a reservation when you buy one of these multi-night passes. No, it's not every time you come to the event, it's just that first night. Now, while the reasoning for this could be chalked up to something like managing capacity, much like the reservations over at Disney, I think this is more in line with the six months of Peacock that comes with every one of these tickets. As you have to reserve a night for the single night tickets, and you also get the six months of Peacock offer with those. So this is likely done to kick off your Peacock subscription on that first night you go to Halloween Horror Nights, which will be really great for that HHN homework or just getting you in the vibe by watching some great horror movies. But overall, I'm just glad we got these multi-night passes. I did get mine. This was the thing I was most looking forward to when it comes to announcement season, and it's
it's the thing I was kind of the most anxious for, if I'm being honest. Just because I wanted to make sure I got my tickets, I was secured to go for opening night. So now I think it finally feels real that Halloween Horror Nights is just around the corner. And I can't wait to be back in the fog on September 1st, and if you're there, come say hi. Now during this big ticket press release, I think some stuff slipped through the cracks, specifically some UOAP perks. Things I do want to talk about in case you are a Universal Orlando pass holder and plan on visiting in or around Halloween Horror Nights. Like for one, we did get a confirmed preview date for the Halloween Horror Nights Tribute Store, which will be August 30th for pass holders. So you bet I will be there to do a Tribute Store tour video. They also revealed that a new collectible will be available in both the pass holder lounge in Islands of Adventure as well as the Five and Diamond Studios. And speaking of things going on in the park, we actually have our first little bit of Halloween Horror Nights construction. Granted, it's not much, we're not seeing full set pieces in the zones quite yet, but we have seen a lot of lighting rigs and trusses arrive in multiple areas areas of the park. Starting with San Francisco, we are seeing some trusses just outside the exit for Fast and Furious Supercharged, as well as along the street before you get there. And speaking of construction over in San Francisco, we also see construction over by Lombards, which hosted a really cool bar last year, so I'm pretty sure that will be coming back for this year. And if this area is really Krampus themed, I cannot wait to see how this bar is executed. And as we move past Diagon Alley, we get to see a little bit of work going on in the Fear Factor live stage, which is rumored to be hosting Nightmare Fuel for the third year in a row. There's some black tarp inside that looks like it's covering up some sort of set dressing, as well as trusses surrounding the theater. However, the most notable construction when it comes to scare zone locations comes in Central Park, ironically, where we see a good amount of trusses covered up in green scrim and some strings connecting them. Now, this is the rumored jungle scare zone, so I would be surprised if the scrim covering the trusses was outfitted with some kind of leaves or vines, and maybe some lighting hangs from the strings connecting the trusses. Again, we don't really know what's going on in the scare zones. There's not really Really much to tell and scare zones aren't the only thing to be getting some construction updates as we have our first house facade for one of the sprung tents that's going under construction courtesy of HHN Jacob on Twitter. Here we see a photo from the top of the Animal Actors Theater so a place where you can access as a regular theme park guest. This is a photo of the rumored crossroads house uh, located in sprung tent one. As you can see we can't really make much from this photo. We are seeing some facade work happening on this house so so I wouldn't be surprised if we see more in the coming weeks. This is just the beginning of the construction journey at HHN, and I just wanted to update you all on what's going on within the park. Now for my final segment in this video, I did want to talk a little deeper about the speculation map. From what's going around, it seems like this is pretty much the list that we're going to be going with this year. But there's one that seems to be pretty up in the air, and it's surprising because it's an IP. I want to talk real quickly about The Exorcist. Now of course, we know The Exorcist. It was featured at HHN 26 in Orlando and was slated to return to the event under the guise of the new Exorcist Believer movie. Well, there's been a lot of trouble behind the scenes on that movie, and it seems like marketing for this movie has been pretty non-existent when it's slated to release in October. So on this most recent speculation map, we saw the Exorcist Believer turn into just the Exorcist, to be based on the 1973 movie that is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. However, it seems like this might not even come to fruition. While all the other houses seem pretty certain to come to the event this year, the the Exorcist is really the one that's up in the air. As for what could happen to this house, I think there are one of two options, and one is a little more likely than the other. The first option is we have a secret IP that is going to take over the space of The Exorcist. Possibly another throwback IP, as The Exorcist would be our big throwback house of this year. As for what this IP could be, I'm not too sure. My first instinct would be to go with another possession-related IP that was on the top of everyone's minds last year. Evil Dead. However, when looking at Hollywood's speculation map, we kind of run into some problems with that, as this speculation map both features The Exorcist and Evil Dead Rise, with Evil Dead Rise making its debut on this third speculation map. Now, this is just a speculation map, this is just rumor. But with it being this close to the event, and with Hollywood usually having one more IP than Orlando, I could see Evil Dead Rise taking that spot. Especially when the Horror Hotel house from last year had a lot of sets that could be repurposed into Evil Dead Rise this year. So short answer for all that, if they are going to add an IP and replace The Exorcist, I have absolutely no clue what it could be. Or what I think is the more realistic option, they insert an original here. 
as with originals they don't have to go through all the contracts and negotiation that they have to do with IPs. Again, this could be complete hooey, we could actually have the Exorcist come to the event, or we could be seeing some secret switch upcoming. Also, in relation to Orlando, I want to talk about the scare zones. Of course, we have the rumored Zodiac Zone in New York, Krampus in San Francisco, Jungle in Central Park, and Vamp 69 in Hollywood. But there's one area that is curiously left off of this list, and that is the Avenue of the Stars, now known as Illuminations Avenue. And there's been a rumor that this is not going to be a scare zone anymore because of the new addition of the Minions. Now, considering that Universal has to toe the line when it comes to IPs and HHN, this isn't too much of a surprise. We've seen it with Simpsons and Diagon Alley where they can't insert any HHN scare zones or houses in those areas, and I think the same is going to happen with the new Minion Land. Which means we'd be losing our iconic front of the park scare zone, or will we? While not as scare zone, we are rumored to have a carnival of oddities horde in the front of the park. And a lot of people are confused or maybe concerned about this. As hordes don't typically count as scare zones, yet Universal has said there are going to be five scare zones this year. And while I'm pretty indifferent on it, of course I would want the Avenue of the Stars scare zone to come back, the fact that we're rumored to have a horde lets us know that they're cooking up something for the front of the park. However, I think it would be really cool if they create some scare zone style sets to put in front of the gate. So before you even walk in, there's that taste of HHN. They've done this in the past, most notably with HHN 19 ripped from the silver screen, where they created a giant palace theater facade in the middle of the arches, and also the Carnival of Carnage, which is quite ironic considering the theme of this horde in the front of the park. I think this could be a great way to bring in those scare zone level sets, keep the scare actors as a roaming horde, and not intrude on the Illumination Avenue area. In other words, Halloween Horror Nights and Universal can have their cake and eat it too. Finally, I wanted to end this little news update with a question on everyone's minds, even after Stranger Things was just announced. And that is, well, what's the next announcement? Right now, we have three IPs announced for the event, meaning that we're probably going to have one more big bi-coastal IP announced for this event. And I think regardless of what's going on with The Exorcist, that this announcement is going to be the Universal Monsters Paris house. We know really nothing about this house, even though it's been rumored since the very beginning. So I think Universal is gearing up to announce this one, especially with Midsummer Scream coming up over in California at the end of the month. And last year, while they featured some original houses at the convention, they pretty heavily focused on the last Universal Monsters house, Legend Collide. So we wouldn't be surprised if we get that announcement around the time of this convention as something for them to focus on there. So I'm calling it right now, Universal Monsters Paris, that's what we're going to see next. That's likely what we're going to see Drew going through as we saw Sophia in Stranger Things and Jordan in The Last of Us. We have one more character's trauma to witness before we get to this event, and I think it's going to be Drew. Anyways, that's it. I know this was kind of an all over the place video, but I had a lot to talk about when it comes to HHN, but I don't think a lot of these discussion topics really warranted a whole video. So I want to do a few of these what's going on with HHN update videos before the event starts in between all the big stuff. So if you enjoy this type of HHN roundup update video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think of these news updates. Are you excited to see construction in the park? What do you think is happening with The Exorcist? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. I want to thank you all for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care everybody.